This house is made of straw bales. A house built out of straw bales? Yes. This is a technique that has been used for hundreds of years. Settlers moving west found that straw bales were an effective tool for getting a comfortable, cozy home built quickly and at a very low cost. In modern times, there's been a bit of a resurgence of the straw bale home. And for many of the same reasons, early settlers looked to these buildings. Now they look awesome, but not all the ideas settlers had were good ones, am I right? Dysentery, anyone? We've been thinking about moving into a straw bale home, and we decided it would be a really good idea to come and see one. They're kind of rare where we live in Pennsylvania, but we were able to find one here at Quiet Creek Farm. Here at this farm that sells all kinds of amazing products in their uh, farm store here, they have a straw bale home, have a yurt, they have a greenhouse, and all kinds of amazing herbs and teas and soaps that you can check out. Beautiful farm pond. They're using solar power and rainwater catchment on the houses. Way up on the hill, they even have a wind turbine running. For any of you out there looking to do your own off-grid homestead like we are, build your own home on your own property, so much in this video, stay tuned. We started the tour with the straw bale home, but it became a tour of a whole lot of other cool things too. It's the walls are wow. most well insulated Look building. And it's heated with our wood burner, which you guys will get to see. So there's radiant heat under the slate. So oh, heated floors cool. in the winter time. It's beautiful. This is nice. You feel the warmth, the radiant heat? Yeah, yeah. Feel do you feel the warmth? Uh -huh. Yeah. It's warm. No, don't worry. It's so nice much. and warm. The difference, we walked in here. I mean, just, just coming right in. So much warmer. We can feel that radiant heat coming right up from the floor. That's so neat. And right here they left uh, this. Oh, exposed. there it is. So yeah. you can see the different layers. And here's cool. a little blueprint if you want to oh, cool. take a picture of that. Yeah. So, this is something this is something you'll see on a lot of straw bale buildings they call it the truth window where they leave one part of the wall open so you can actually see there's the straw that's what these walls are made of and that's why these walls are so thick you see these beautiful windows they're very deep that's essentially just a straw bale with plaster over it straw bales on the side so you get these beautiful rounded deep cavities in their windows it's a really beautiful architecture some people want to do this just for the look of it. We're very interested in it because of the insulation that a straw bale gives you. And that insulation keeps things quiet, keeps things warm and cozy. And it's a nice material to actually use for building. Here I keep this closed, but there's mush reishi Whoa. mushrooms in there. Look at that. Oh, cool. Really beautiful. Do you see this in the middle? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I love that. What do you think, kiddo? Daddy, I'll add to you if you can act with me. Daddy. Yeah, yeah, see that. Do you like it? Are they happy to be here? So this building technique, which was literally born from the homesteader movement of the 1800s, consists of two unique things that you won't find in most other homes. Straw bale homes have a roof, have lumber, have a foundation like any other. But of course, they differ in their wall structure, which is made of straw bales, which are stacked together kind of like giant Legos. They provide good quality walls, amazing insulation at a low cost. Of course, straw bales can't get wet and that's where the plaster comes in. So on a straw bale home, you'll find all the straw bales have been covered in a plaster. Sometimes this is a lime plaster, sometimes a clay plaster or a cement plaster. Now, when you get in the plaster, cracks like you see like there, how do you repair that? Do you have to, do you patch over it? Is it not a big deal? Yeah, we would just patch over it. Just patch? It. So do you a little make a little batch formula. of, yep. and just kind of smooth over it? Yeah. Do you have to chip away a lot of old stuff when you go to patch it, or can you just go right over that? I think Rusty just went over it because we repatched, you guys will see when we go down to the yurt, he yeah. has earthen benches, and oh, when we cool. did it, we just slapped Right, right on, on right on top, okay. This is cool, I like the bottles worked into the... The other oh, down 
I'm excited look at that. to have Michelle Bales not being able to hang stuff on the wall. Yeah. So I really like using that as storage wall space. Yeah, so at that's the top. Kind of right. challenging. Oh, so that's interesting. So the straw bale stop right there. And then up from that up above would just be the roof framing. Yep. That's all wood that. here. And just a, a loft, loft up top? Yep. Yeah, okay. And there is, they attached, took it out from the shop space. There is a bathroom in here. Oh, okay. So we and use all compost, human newer toilets here. We have about 20 okay. five gallon buckets. And That's once what they you get use. filled. Yep. Wow. So how do you like dealing with that? <clears throat> Um, I think it really teaches, you know, someone has to, in the end, deal with your mm -hmm. poop, manure, uh, so it really teaches you that. <laughs> it, 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 we someone's say gonna... the poop stays in the loop. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you use for it? Is it mulch? That is just from a local, an Amish slumbering. Okay. They have, you can just back your bed in, six dollars, they fill up the bed of your house. Oh, that's great. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a good source for us. No, there's not much of a smell, um, especially... No, not at all. That's what we keep here. Everyone says it does a good job. Let me make sure everybody's ready. I think they were just grabbing a snack at the car. So, what do we think about the straw bale home? Will it work for us? We're going to come back to that at the end of this video and actually interview Sarah, get her honest opinion on living in a straw bale home, and we'll talk about our choice as well, what we think. But there was still a lot more to see on this property that we didn't want to miss, including the yurt, which was the next stop on our tour. We have had a yurt dream. <laughs> so long. Since so long. Since before our we had the first, kids. Yeah, since. That's what we thought we would do for our first building because it was so affordable. Yeah. Yeah. This so is now, a big one too. is this the first time we've actually been in a yurt? Seen a yurt yeah. all these years yeah. of wanting a yurt. That's exciting. Well, this one's not very aesthetic, oh, but wow. <laughs> beautiful. There are spiders. <laughs> it feels so big. Look at this. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> I, that glass bottle wall is so cool. They do not, on, on like pictures, I've seen pictures of those in all these Europe books and I always thought like, ah, nah. In person, they look so cool. One, two, three. So they slice four. the bottoms off the bottles, right? And stick them four. in the wall, is that what they do? I'm shocked at how big it feels in here. It's, it's crazy, I'm a little dizzy. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> like you're walking around the Cause it's a, it's a corkscrew to the bathroom. But look how pretty it's So it is. cool. I love this bottle wall. Yeah. I. Oh yeah, you're okay. So it's, how is that? Well, there, you must be right. I found a they have like matches for. I found a, I found a glue, a glue on a dragon. A dragonfly. Yeah, look uh -huh. at that dragonfly. Oh man, these bottles. these are so much cooler in you person. Up here in the loft while you're in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah, that's true. They've had a lot of <laughs> That's what the kids Hi, would do too. <laughs> Something too for the this floor is so itself cool. is the same. It's the glass bottles, and but you guys, there's a little window over here. Oh, cool. You can see what the floor oh. is made out of. So that's what insulates the floor. The whole floor. So the Look whole floor much. is glass bottles. Is that in sawdust? You have to drink a clay lot of beer. Sand. Clay and yeah. sand. Oh, that's and then it says clay beer. floor on top. And what's on top? That is the clay, the straw clay. bale. There. This actually yeah. holds up a lot better. This is the earth. And we had some of our so Airbnb beers try and chop firewood inside. Oh, so <laughs> man. So don't chop yeah. firewood. Don't chop firewood on it. It's not that sweet. Well, this gives me a lot of hope for the floor. Know. Originally, we talked about doing an earth floor. And you love the idea of the earth yes. floor. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And then we have all this clay show up on the property. You got a little worried about our, our kids hammering an earth floor. It's, it's yeah. like really hard. But now I really want to do it because we have all the clay for it. We have all the material we, have we that need. Resource. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. You better drink a lot of beer to fill in the glass bottle floor. I guess so. Yeah, what do you think of this floor, babe? I mean, I love it. this is what I want to do. It, it's so. Nice. 
much more durable than I thought. It feels like a real hard. It, does. it doesn't feel like anything. I mean, yeah, if you try to chop wood on it, I guess. <laughs> All right, you'll fit right in, bud. Got the drum. Do people sleep in the loft or just? I, yeah, I went apprentice this is a couple years ago. This is where she stayed the whole season. Okay. Yeah. She made friends with the spiders. Oh, here's that. <laughs> we we wanted to live in a yurt forever. Yeah. We've like really liked the yurt, but we keep coming back to the insulation. Yes. And you know, so keeping it warm enough, and we'd be in it year year round with the kids. Yeah. Keeping it warm enough. Is it really hard to keep it in the winter? It is. That's what Those are you hit it right on the dot. Yeah. Those are the two issues yeah. with yurts typically for like using as permanent living spaces is insulation um, and moisture control. Yeah. So obviously and these are just canvas walls. Yeah. Which typically yurts, yeah. but like the earth and the straw bale you saw. It. Oh, so different. It's yeah. It's much much better insulation. We started this whole idea with like, oh no, we'll do a year again, and then we eventually gra gravitated towards the straw bale oh, idea yeah. because of that. Because yeah. of that. Yeah, and so the the wood burner definitely helps, and we got and a this more is efficient a much one. bigger one. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we just did this because yeah. this was not very effective at all. <laughs> so this is helping, but it's still like. It's not you insulated. Just have to run it constantly, it's not right? that you'd be running it constantly to try and keep if it. If you were even. living here, yeah. yeah. And I know they do, like, they'll have the, like, insulation. Yeah, you can upgrade your you, Yeah, you can definitely insulation. make it more insulated than just yep. the canvas. But it's, it's like, people say, like, you gotta run your heat all yeah, the time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. It, it's very cold. Yeah, it does feel. Uh, this is super cool. I just, this yeah, that slate. stone back. Is it slight? Yeah. Yeah, that's so. neat. Yeah. You just, like, screw it in. <laughs> I can work like that. Right? <laughs> like that. <laughs> just piece it together. So um, Jay Wormke, who does our solar installation workshops, his farm, Blue Rock Station in Ohio, that's their house is, it looks like a yurt, it's shaped like a yurt, so it's circular, so airflow, like heating is really low for them. Yeah. Um, but it's the tire and straw bale nice. walls. Wow. So that works really well for them. Oh man, this. It's very inspirational. <laughs> Visiting the yurt is not good for our decision to not live in a yurt, because I love it. It is cold. You it is cold. Like, That's the one thing. If we the straw bale felt warm, the straw like bale felt like cozy yurt. instantly. Because like it's a lot bigger, and I like this. I like the loft. The straw bale for me, like I don't like the idea. Of well, ice. we could put a loft and a bit. We could build a bigger straw bale home and put could a loft you make in a straw it. Bale, uh, uh, straw bale house look like a year. Well, that's what she was saying. These people they do. They have a circular one. Ah. With tires. Um, I really like all the bottles. Don't forget, like 18, too. buddy, you can build your yurt. You can do a yurt, yep. Park it right beside us. Give you a breezeway. Make a fire. Our graduation <laughs> gift to all our kids. You get your own yurt, kid. Make your way in the world. <laughs> One of the things that like appeals to us about this style of building and living is we have a big property to maintain right now and the things that break are mechanical and complicated keeping it simple yes yeah. keeping it simple where if it breaks it's like it's something that we could fix without specialized help that's a good you know point. Yeah. yeah because that that's all a cost it's, if we can't fix it it's more expense so to be able to just say like oh you know that's why i was asking about the walls in the straw bale house cuz you know, if we have to fix that, it means rubbing some plaster on the wall. I could handle that. Right, like that. That's <laughs> I'm not super handy, but I could I could rub plaster on a wall. So, I this year is so cool. I really like this. This is, but I also think like it's so cool. But I do think for us, you and someday you and me maybe in a year. We'll see. We still got the year dream. Before we're done today, we'll get a. All right, little drummer boy, let's go. I like this dog, nice little dog. Oh yeah, she seems like that. We came to Quiet Creek to tour these alternative buildings, but it turned out there was a lot more to see. Check out the amazing systems Quiet Creek uses to harvest solar power, heat with wood, and catch rainwater and use it for all their water needs. So solar next, I guess. Yeah, I would love to see that. Yep, yep, the solar and. 
Mama. We're gonna go up here, guys. Yeah, so we'd always be coming to see the animals at farms, yeah. and now we're like <laughs> advancing growing. beyond that. Yeah. Yeah, looking yeah, at you the guys buildings. Have done a lot of growing already, you understand? Yeah. That's what, yeah. That's how things. All right, so the solar looks like we had, was this the original one, original something here, and then that, or two different so, systems? Our, our big system is actually up on the hill. Which oh, no way. Welcome to Walk Up There. Yeah. Um, so this is the newer system, and then that little, those four small panels are the pump. So in theory, if we can get our pond to hold water someday, that we'll be using the pond water for irrigation for all oh, our raised beds. Oh, awesome. We have tanks, so we have two 2,000 gallon tanks up on the hill, and so this, because all of our water is rainwater that we collect on the farm into tanks, and so this pumps up from the well by the house up to the ones on the hill, and then that is gravity fed into all of our drip line. That is so cool because this is exactly what we want to do on our place. Okay, yeah. We, so what we want to do is exactly what you just described. We have a, a we're setting up on a, we call it Sunny Mountain. And we built our pond, the, the pond's over here. We built our pond just, just a month ago down at the bottom like this. Yeah. And this is exactly what I wanted to do and I haven't, I don't know how to do it yet, so I gotta look at what you guys have set up oh here. Gosh, I wish Rusty was here, man. He could just talk <laughs> your ear off about this, but yeah. This thing here, the solar pump, that pumps out of the pond? Will. Will. The, Will. We have a tank, so you see the 10 miles per hour yep, sign. Yep. So that's, we have a big holding tank there. And so all the water that comes down and collects in that, we pump uphill. And that's what I, oh, this is so cool, because that's yeah. exactly what I was wondering how to do. This solar panel here during the day, collects enough energy, it runs your pump, and it fills cisterns okay. on the top. Yes. And then gravity, whenever you need it, even during the night, yep. if this is It doesn't take any dark, energy. It's all gravity. It's all gravity. Because gravity. we're on a hill, we put our pond down at the bottom, because that's where all the rainwater's coming anyway, yep. right? You're <laughs> yep. gonna, right, that's where you need to catch it. I want to put a pump just like this into our pond, pump it to a cistern with a, does it have like a call on demand, like a float we valve? We have a, yes, it's a float oh, valve man. and then we yeah. have a lever. So we shut it off obviously in the winter. So yeah, it right. Because other, the yep, pipes. yep. But what I want to do is have it, call it up there, fill it at the top, and then gravity feed to our house and for our animals. Yep. So you guys do it for the plants here, we you do don't have animals, her. but yeah. we would do it, we would be doing it for the cows and things. That is so cool. Cause that's exactly, this system here is exactly what I want to do. Inverter panels. So these are our solar and then our wind turbine one. And then if it's blowing too hard, like during a windstorm or something, it'll shut down. So you have to uh, switch the breaker cool. back. But that's where all that this is. This is all, yeah, all yeah. here. The inverter, it's wired where the panels talk to the inverter. And then yeah. that's connected to, it looks like the breaker here. So everything in the house is just regular plug in. Yes. You just get to live like a normal normal usage yeah, down there. Yeah, I mean, we obviously practice conservation. We just, the best practice is always yeah. use less energy oh, we yeah. can, but we run dishwasher, we run All that. dryer. Yeah, it's, we live with a lot of the modern luxuries. Like yeah. we're not living without anything. Yeah. Yeah. If it's just me and Kay doing this, we could say, you know, oh, we can do without this or that, or, you know, we could be, with the kids, we're trying to be pretty balanced, right? Yeah. We don't want them to look, we want them to learn the, the life lessons of this and, and be conservation minded, but we also don't want it to be like, oh yeah, it was always dark in our house, we can never turn the light. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> and I like, I like having the lights on. I yeah. Mean, a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. never a problem. Yeah. This is our eternal flame. <laughs> this is actually a new one. We just got rid of our old burner. So we're still getting used to this one. It's burning a lot more wood right now mm -hmm. because we just had hooked up our greenhouse, oh. which we haven't even turned the radiant wow. for. That's just with the blower on. Yeah. Um, but this stays at 140 to 160 degrees at all times. So we do chop a lot of wood. You but do. That's, yeah. <laughs> we have our wood, our log pile, if you guys can see over there. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, wow. That's pretty impressive. Log <laughs> it's, yeah, so Jim, our handyman, he uses the saw. We'll chop it. We use the mall, but Sarah and I won't touch the saw. <laughs> We're not quite comfortable with that yet. But yeah, the skid steer definitely helps. You keep yeah. this fire going all day. 
overnight it stays lit yeah so we'll fill it i can open this up and we'll fill this pretty much if we're keeping keeping a good eye on it we'll fill it once at night and once in the morning and that's typically wow. keeps us heated and obviously in the warmer months we use a lot less wood yeah so it just depends but and this this heats the radiant heat inside of the straw bale yeah and inside of the store and we have our herb dryer wow and so that keeps okay the herb dryer between 95 and 105 degrees all year round wow you fill the the hopper here you just fill it right we to the top i did i filled it this morning and it's i'll need to fill it again probably right after dinner so you stuff it once in the morning fill it to the top come back out in the evening fill, fill it, it again do it all over again and there's a few times where we've had to start from scratch which is not fun yeah but we're pretty good most days <laughs> That yeah, that's going. awesome. We've lived in a couple different homes, but they're they're all been very standard on grid oil burner. Okay, so yeah. we've been doing interviews with people uh, who do this professionally, and then we've been doing field trips, heat and straw bales and yeah. yurts. We're trying to look at them and say, you know, you see them online, you see what they look like in pictures, but to actually go and like put your hands on the wall and yeah. see what it really looks Can like. Exactly. Like yeah, yep. it, that's what we like to tell people too, is because, like, we do so much like sustainable living yeah. in general here, which is great. But like, not everybody, like, not every sustainable living practice works for every person. Yeah. And so, like, to give yourself grace to like know yeah. some things will do well for you, and this will really like click with your lifestyle. And some things it's okay just to say not going to try yeah. that. So, yeah. So. And that's <laughs> why, like, what you guys do here with workshops and things, we always encourage people do field trips yeah. and then better than a few, I mean, we'll be here for a day. We'll see what you guys have, but even better is, you know, like, can you help a friend now? Can you work yeah. on a farm? Can you do a, an apprenticeship yeah. where you learn more hands-on, more than just a quick look? Well, that's how I started here was just volunteering yeah. and realizing like, yeah, this is something I want to learn yeah. more about, but yep. I'm glad I did the volunteer hours first, first <laughs> to make sure. Yeah. It's definitely a lot of work. Oh yeah. Yep. That's for sure. So we've been able to see a yurt. We've been able to see some straw bale. We've been able to see a lot with the solar and the water. What are your thoughts? I think it's awesome. I think they've done a lot here. And we could probably stay for hours and hours and hours <laughs> and like learn more about their system. This was like, there were so many bonuses. Uh, like just the solar and the pond. All right, so we'll, we'll set you up here. So Sarah's been living in the, the straw bale part of the farm here since 2020 you said correct and we want some honest opinions on living in a straw bale home because we're seriously considering it this is a real front runner so what living in it for a couple years through the winters and things what's your opinions go for it yes. Ooh, all right absolutely i watched one of your videos on different types of building there is a downside to everything and an upside to everything so it's the individual person you guys already have the clay you yeah, we do. Resources, <laughs> well insulated for this area. So as long as you have that metal roof on top, definitely yeah, go for it. Yeah, good for it. What's the maintenance been on the exterior? Haven't done anything since the original wow. build. And that was there for how long? It's been about 15, 16 wow. years now. They've done nothing to the outside that no. long. Benefits of the straw bale, things we read are the insulation, the sound, right? The... Um, just the natural beauty of it. Yes, right? being surrounded by natural resources. It feels super cozy. That's so one of the cozy, main reasons yeah. I stayed in there. It's like my own little nook. Yeah, um, it's so warm. You, compared to the shop, you walk in your section there. Yeah. I mean, it was like <laughs> crazy, the difference. Yeah. My thing with the straw bale, I love the idea of every bit of the element of the building it, putting it together, and I love seeing it and feeling that warmth and the quietness in there. I'm not great with maintenance. So we were really wondering coming here, we wanted to ask specifically about like how much maintenance and the fact that you said in 16 years, the outside nothing's been done and it looks like that good in 16 years. That makes me feel a little better because I'm not super good with maintenance. <laughs> yeah, that white little chip just happened this past summer. Yeah, so okay. So that's yeah, goes to show yeah. it's very little. Um, and and I, that's iron oxide that they the used to color. color that so that's all natural so as cool. well spackle on and because that, right? it's natural it doesn't have to look perfect i love that <laughs> so. 
<laughs> I'm natural. I don't look perfect. I like a natural, <laughs> like oh a natural my. home. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. It's been so great. We've we've been looking at YouTube videos and pictures, but to actually get to come and see one has been so nice. Yeah, it's very and, rare. I find. Like yeah. Claire and Rusty, they went to they lived in Washington for a little bit, and yurts and straw bears are very yeah, common yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So. Yep. But out here, it's less. This is the closest one we've been able to find. Me and Kay talk about our thoughts on this tour at the end of this video, but before we got in the car and discussed what we thought about our own home, and whether or not it should be straw bale, we had to go into the farm store and have some tea, which was amazing. Oh man, oh, every time you walk in here, it just smells so amazing. Yeah, this is delicious. Tea? What kind? Dr. Feelgood. Ooh, I, I could like use it. that. It's delicious. It's mint. You'll like it. I will like it. I asked, I was going to throw my cup away. I asked where the garbage was. Nope, the worms get it. <laughs> well, then you can see Look that. at that. Look no way. Look at it wiggle. <laughs> and then instead of putting that in the garbage, they're going to eat it. You have any paper products or food waste, they'll devour it. And it smells like coffee grounds, so not even a bad smell there. And <laughs> you have to do something the eggshells. And they'll, they'll break those down eventually. So I emptied this one out this spring, so it's going to take a while to build back up. But This doesn't look what I pictured as far as complication for like a worm. Is that why? Yeah, we have, we just get bins from the Dollar Tree. We sell them little kits. Oh, look, they have it here. We have obviously bigger bins. Oh, cool. Worms eat my garbage books. I like it. Yeah. Support global warming. Worming. Global warming. And the kids are like, oh my gosh. What <laughs> workshops do you guys do throughout the year? Yeah, so we have a spring, typically one in the spring, one in the fall of our mushroom inoculation. So we go through the whole process of cutting the logs and inoculating them. Do people take a log home or do yeah. they? Oh, that's Yeah, cool. they get to have, take it with them in the booklet that goes through all that. We do our medicinal herbs and uses class that our herbalist Sarah teaches. That one's really in depth. That, that's a longer one. That's about four or five hours. Oh. And we go over everything. I make a variety of stuff. We have our wreath making classes. We do soap making. That's a very oh, popular nice. way we do soap making classes. We do oh, we do bread making. I think that's our oh, other big one. Oh nice. We have Claire's sprouted whole grain fermented bread, which is popular, so we teach people how to make that. Cool. Those are our new classes. We had an amazing visit at Quiet Creek Farm. You should definitely go check them out on social media and in person if you can. Take a tour, take a workshop. Links below for that. It was time for the long ride home and Kay and I to discuss what we felt about the straw bale home, the yurt, adobe floors, solar power, everything we saw at Quiet Creek. Could we build something similar to this place on Sunny Mountain? Do we want to try? That was an awesome field trip. I'm so glad we went on that field trip. <laughs> and I feel like you could say field trip a few more times. <laughs> Yeah, it's a place you could stay for hours and hours. Oh. Learn so much about their Every single have. system. Yeah. That was like, like a... Like you said, we could go to the basement and see the water filtration. Oh, I never saw that. I wanted to see that. It made me realize, like, yes, someday I will absolutely want to live in a yard. <laughs> but not right now because it with the kids is so cold. It was cold. Walking in on the yurt was like ah, it's too cold. Yeah, but also the floors. I was gonna say one of the things we learned for sure. I so want to do an earthen floor. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, that was awesome. Like really durable, hard. You were expecting it was so like hard. it was hard to tell whether it was concrete or dirt. Straw bale. Any like gut I feelings? I actually went in not thinking I would like it very much. And it was beautiful. Like I really liked it. Now I want to do straw bale. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Are you the opposite now? No, no. I just, uh oh, I think we're hippies. <laughs> I think we're hippies. 
Yeah, like if you want to do it, I want to do it. Uh, we want an earth floor and a straw bale house. That's a happy scram. Want to learn more about straw bale homes, yurts, and all kinds of other alternative building methods? Check out this podcast where we broke down seven different alternative buildings that might save you money building on your own homestead.